Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rashmi Rangan. If there is a hole in your pocket, you are in the right place. Only if you are ready to patch it up. Let's begin with just two premises about money to get you thinking and started about your money management journey, if you will. Money is a two-year-old. I want, I want, I want. You are the adult. You set the rules. You tell that two-year-old, mm -mm -mm. you can't have any pudding, not until you eat your meat. Here is a visual. This two-year-old going bah, bah, bah. Oh boy, I can remember those days some 36 years ago. Although to be brutally honest, my daughter was not like this. Mm. You are the responsible adult. Remember this thing about responsibility. It's a grace that we give ourselves. I wish I had come up with that, but not me. It was Kristen Moeller. Beautiful quote. Responsibility is a grace that we give ourselves. So if you have that vision in your mind about money, the two-year-old, and you have given yourself responsibility as a grace. These two go hand in hand. For them to go hand in hand, it is all about planning so that you can make the most of your money. My budget is a good word. It must be in our vocabulary. Because what is a budget? It's just a plan, right? Remember, you've got this two-year-old. You've got to have a plan for the two-year-old from the moment he or she wakes up till it goes to bed. You must have a plan on what it will eat, where will it play, <laughs> When will it nap, etc., 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 and all that is planning. Budget is the same thing. You are planning for the money, which is the two-year-old. You also need to know your income because that is the holy grail of budgeting. What is coming in? Once you know what is coming in, then you need to skim a little. That's your saving. Skim a little more for your goals. And then you pay all your bills and expenses and hope and pray that at the end of the month, you still have some money to spend. But if you don't, you've already accounted for savings and goals as long as it is not a deficit at the end of the month. Why budget? Again, I bring you to the money as a two-year-old. If money is the two-year-old, you want to know what's happening to it at all times. You go to the grocery store with your two-year-old, you won't let the two-year-old run around, will you? you're going to make sure you have your eye on that two-year-old at all times. You create rules. Why do you create rules for your two-year-old that you can do this, but you can't do that? At least not yet. Because you want that two-year-old to grow up a thriving adult. And that's the same concept with money. The reason you set rules and parameters for your money is you want it to thrive for you, right? Know better, do better. Before COVID, 
40% of Americans could not handle a $400 emergency. Can you imagine? In our lifetimes, we make about a million dollars at least. That's what we earn. And then when we die, we die in debt. So instead of passing on wealth to the next generation, we are indebting the next generation all because we did not plan our two-year-old money. Don't go broke trying to look rich. And that meme you will see in my presentations quite frequently because it's so true. Instead of having a $200 handbag with nothing in it, buy a $10 handbag and have $190 in it. No savings is like no gas money. You could be driving a Lamborghini. I don't know which is the most expensive car really, but the most expensive car on planet Earth is what you could be owning. But if you don't have savings, it's like you cannot fill it up with gas not because the gas prices have gone up so much, which they have, but you didn't plan for it. And therefore you're stuck. You're going nowhere. Don't plan just to survive. Plan on thriving. Wherever you are in your life at this moment, it's okay. Just turn back. Embrace your past, forgive all your trespasses money-wise in the past, learn from your mistakes, move on, don't dwell, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda. You haven't created a time machine yet. When you create one, then you can go back in time and change. But right now you can't do anything. So the time is now. Today is March 30th. Well, very soon we start a new month. And what better place to start anything than now? Because planning for April will need to begin today. So what will the plan require you to do? List all your sources of income. How much you bring in? What's the frequency? If the money is reliable or fluctuates, because sometimes you're called in for 40 hours a week, sometimes you might be called in 20 hours, sometimes 60 hours. And if there is a fluctuation, what should go into planning? The least amount you bring in or the most amount you bring in? If you plan around the most amount you bring in, what happens when you bring in the least amount? So list all your sources and think clearly, carefully about those sources and their reliability. Calculate your monthly saving goal. It's got to be 10% at least. If today you cannot squeeze in 10% in your budget, it's okay. Just have a plan to squeeze in 10%. It might only be 1% today, it might be 0% today, that's okay. But look at your expenses and see where you can cut back so that you can begin a savings plan. Set smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, reliable or reachable and timed. Unless you have a date certain, a goal is just a dream. List all your expenses and track them. Categorize them in your way because I could create categories. They may not work for you. So create your own categories. Then once you have this plan, test it out. Try it out for three to six months to see if it works for you. It may work for you. It may not. And if it doesn't, don't throw the plan out the window. 
tweak it until it works for you. After all is said and done, what the goal is to make the math work for you. There's money coming in. You got to plan. You got to save. You got to set goals. You got to meet your today's expenses. And hopefully there's money for you to just, you know, not worry about. So in order to make the math work, you will either have to increase your income or you will have to adjust your goals or you'll have to decrease your expenses. And the last thing is when you are saving, it is incredibly critical that that saving goes into a savings account. I always say, name it. Remember, money is the two-year-old. If you don't decide what you're saving for, then money will find its way out of your pocket very easily. What you want to do is say, I am giving up my morning coffee purchase. That's a sacrifice. But if you are giving that up, what are you giving it up for? Name it. And you might say, I'm giving up stopping at my favorite coffee place on my way to work for XYZ. To be debt free. To be credit card debt free. By such and such date. And put that money. So if you're saving a dollar a day, $5 a week, put that money into that savings account. Don't touch it for any purpose other than to be credit card debt free. A budget plan. Ideally, you know this is your income. Uncle Sam is smart. They don't depend on you to be saving and setting money aside. Before you get your money, they are already taking a portion of your income. So money you don't see, you don't spend, right? Therefore, might be a good idea to have a separate savings account into a bank where you don't access it easily. Have your direct deposit portion, your savings portion, go into that bank account. Remember money you don't see, it's not in your budget, right? Home and family, that is everything, you know, uh, food, uh, roof over your head, utility bills, entertainment, only about 40% of your gross income really can go there. After Uncle Sam has taken 25% and you've put 20% for your savings and your goals. Mobility, that could be physical mobility, transportation. It could be economic mobility, student loans. All of that, about 8%. And living your health, feel good, about 7%. When you add them up, it is 100%. What you have control over is <coughs> how much you allocate into each of those categories. That's all. If there's $100 coming in, you simply cannot be spending $101. That is the math. Because if you are spending $101, you are borrowing probably $26 because Uncle Sam will take. Where should I be this year is how I used to budget. If my housing and family expense is $600, I need to earn $1,500. 
but I earn only $1,200. That means I have to adjust my savings and goals. That's the only place I have for adjustment, nowhere else. That's how I would plan my budget. And since I had nothing left when all was said and done, in a shoebox, every paycheck, I would write an IOU and drop it. It was a constant reminder that when circumstances change, not if, but when my financial circumstances change, I will pay myself back. Other ways to plan, you start with your income, subtract all your expenses until you're down to zero, and then you borrow. That's really not a good planning strategy, is it? Or you start with your expenses, take up a second job, and if it's still not feasible to make ends meet, a third job or borrow. Or your income matches your expenses and your savings and all of your goals, you are in good shape. So let's start with income. There are many types of income, earned income. A regular job, gig work, social security, pension, etc. Profits from a business, from buying and selling. Interest, income from lending, which is bonds. Dividends, income from shares or stocks. Rental income, if you have a, a rental property. Royalty, if you have patents, franchise. Capital gains, you have to pay taxes on it. But profits from sale of an asset and others, social security, alimony, child support, disability, SNAP, gifts. I always ask for cash gifts, inheritance, spouse's income, so forth and so on. So look at your income very carefully. Make a list, check it twice. Every source of your current income, Make sure you know the amount you can use for your budget. That is the after-tax income and the frequency of earning it. List every source of potential income, such as rental, gig, second job. Goal is to have $48,000 livable income for a four-person household, $4,000 a month or 1,000 per person in your household. If you are a household of one, $12,000 a year won't get you nowhere. Here is the income, area median income, Newcastle County, based on family size. To be wealthy, you need to be in at least in the area median income column. 50% of area median income is what I call I will survive category. I will thrive category is 100% area median income. So what I'm saying is if you're a family of one, then your goal ought to be to get a job, change careers, or do what it takes to earn at least $66,200 a year legally. For a family of six, we are talking about $109,700 a year. At $54,850 a year, you are surviving. <clears throat> so let's talk 4,000 a month. If you're getting paid every week, your check should be $923.08 a week. Twice a month, $2,000. Every other week, $1,846. 
15 cents. In all of your planning, make sure that when you are seeking that high income, that there is reliability, certainty of it continuing in the long term because benefits cliff is real. So you could lose your purchase of care, food stamps, et cetera, et cetera, if you make more than that threshold. 4,000 a month, oh my, I bring home 1,000 a month. Are you sure? Have you calculated the right amount? If you're getting paid every other week, then you are getting 26 checks a year, not 24, but it only adds $83 to your $1,000. Where do I get other $3,000 ought to be a question. And go back to that slide about the income, of rental income, gig work, uh, uh, business, so many other ways of bringing home income. Go into your closet, see what is there that still has a tag, sell it online. Cars, at the moment, if, if you are working from home, don't need your car, then <clears throat> sell your car. It's a seller's market. If you want to downsize your home, now is the perfect time to downsize, sell the home and rent for a while. Look to see what other people in your profession are making. And if they are making more, then start looking. That's at least, um, it'll give you a little um, uh, help in negotiating better wages if you really don't want to move. But now is the perfect time. If you're hurting, it is your market. Go look for a job that pays you more for doing the same thing. Money, money, money. When it comes down to the two-year-olds really rule us, don't they? You could change your job and get more money. You could ask for more hours at work. And over time, is uh, recently I was at the post office and some one of the clerks over there said that they are working so many extra hours because there is such a huge shortage of workers. You could get a second job. If you're good online, how about selling some of your stuff or buying things at sales and making some profit? If people are always borrowing from you, then get them to sign an IOU and earn an interest on it. <clears throat> Turn your asset into income. If you have a gift or a talent, convert that into an income generator. If you have a nice car and you're not really using it every single day, rent it out on Turo. If you have stuff to sell, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, so many places, you could get rid of your junk. Remember, one man's junk is another man's treasure. Gift cards and anything else, uh, gifts that are unused, still in a box, sell it. I was at the mall recently <clears throat> and I saw a kiosk where you could take your unused gift cards, expired gift cards, and convert that into cash. If you get a 1099 at the end of the year, that will be triggering a uh, taxable event. That means you will have to include that in your tax returns as earned income and pay taxes on it. So if you're a great driver, you own a good car, good driving record, you're licensed and insured, you know, Lyft, Uber, Prime, so many other things. Also, if you really have a 
good driving record. You are licensed, insured, and you love to drive. There is a huge driver's shortage. You could consider commercial driver's license. But if you have a poor driving record, don't even go there. CDLs are paid really well. I go back to reminding anytime you're bringing more income, Uncle Sam wants his share. Don't leave money on the table. Child support is owed, get child support. Taxes, make sure you take advantage of all credits deductions. Food stamps, are you eligible for them? If so, take advantage of those. Has your disability? been denied way too many times, there are legal aids in Delaware that could provide you assistance to ensure that you get your disability if you're de deserving of disability income. As for cash gifts for all occasions, and go and look to see if you have gift cards that you haven't used as yet. Tax time review, always look at this. Every tax day, do you get a refund? If you do get a refund, good making withholding changes. Bring that little extra money that you absolutely need every month to be able to thrive or even survive. What can you do when you are, say, waiting for that refund in the month of February, but your landlord is evicting you in the month of January. What do most people do then? Get the refund advance loan and RALs are super expensive. So look at your money flow and particularly around tax time, do you get a huge refund or do you make a payment every tax day? If you make a small payment every tax day, it's okay. Otherwise, Uncle Sam has figured out ways to fee you, failure to file, failure to pay, failure to pay on time penalties and stuff like that. So be cognizant of everything thing that requires money coming in has a tax consequence. Most of us have a job. We don't have to really worry much about it because our paychecks have the withholdings. But if we have a business, then we don't get the paycheck. And if we don't get the paycheck, guess what? Then we are not withholding. And it's the small businesses that do get into trouble with Uncle Sam seriously and almost all the time. Get in the habit of saving each paycheck for your taxes. Do you need to file your returns? Go to irs.gov. It will tell you whether you need to file your returns. However, since the pandemic, Government has come up with numerous ways to make our lives a little easier. If IRS does not know we exist, the only way we are helped is if they know we exist. So if you don't get a social security pension, et cetera, et cetera, there is no way for the government to know. Therefore, you may have to file a return for informing them that you exist purposes. But take a look and go to irs.gov. Around tax planning, remember the child tax credit. Also, in 2021, since July or maybe earlier, you've been getting the advanced earned, advanced child care tax credit. As a result, what you would expect as a refund this year has shrunk. In some instances, you might end up owing a little money as well. But the tax 
entanglement of the last couple of years could tangle you. And if that's the case, know that uh, in Delaware, there is the low income tax clinic. However, we are addressing directly the very time sensitive ones. If you've gotten a notice from IRS saying your response is due by such and such date, scan it and send it to us so we can tell you whether uh, there is an urgency for us to take your case or guide you how to respond. Because if they're asking for documentation, you can provide the documentation. But if it means that if you don't respond, you might lose your rights, then we would want to know how we can help you. Credits for higher education, education IRAs, interest deductions on your student loans, IRS, IRA, flexibility, become a homeowner, any non-cash charitable contribution. There are many, many things that you need to take into consideration about bringing in income. Managing your taxes, take a look at your withholding and see if there are any uh, adjustments that you need to make. Also, when you're getting your taxes done, go to free tax prep sites. Uh, there are volunteer income tax assistance centers, BITERS in the state of Delaware. All you have to do is call 211, find one near you and utilize them. They are the ones that know all about the low income families, households, credits, uh, and other deductions that uh, you can claim. Missed opportunities, well, the rates for the last several years, decades have been low. They're talking about raising, they've started raising interest rates. Look to see, maybe change bank accounts and move money into more interest bearing accounts, but look at what cost it comes at. Tax deferred investments, such as your traditional IRA or a 401k, good place to look. Any flexible spending plans your employer offers is also a good place to look because it reduces your taxable income. So just as an exercise, this is something everyone ought to do, regardless of how beautifully your budget works. Name 10 ways that you can maximize your income this year. Just 10 ways to maximize your income this year. And I've listed, by the way, this will be available if you email me and I can send you this slide deck. It is also on our website at dcrac.org. Net monthly income is the money you get in your hand. Figure out if you are paid every week, write that down. Multiply it by 52, divide it by 12, and you know what your monthly income is. If you're getting paid bi-monthly, you get 24 checks. Multiply that by 24 and divide it by 12. If you get bi-weekly, you get 26 checks. Multiply it by 26, divide it by 12. You get your monthly income. Bi-weeklies have one advantage. In some ways, it's an advantage, and in many ways, it's a disadvantage. The advantage is that there are two extra paychecks that you get every year. If you can live on those two paychecks you get every month, then this is money you can actually not plan in your budget, and it can go toward your saving goals. Right. I talk about your savings goals, but let me say it here again. Your saving goal ought to be very different categories. So one category is liquidity. You want to make sure you have one month's income in an account 
so that if a bill is higher this month, there is money in that account to take care of it. I call it liquidity fund. I also put that money in my transactional account. That means the account from which my regular bills are paid is where I have one month's extra income saved. And then all my bills are automated. I can set it and forget it. So if one month I charge more on my credit card, I have enough money in that liquidity budget to take care of it. I don't have to pay minimum or less than the full amount. Then you must save three months of your income for emergency. So if you have a three-year plan, year one, you put in liquidity. Year two, that money can go in your emergency. Year three, that money can go in your emergency. And in year four, it can go and build up your emergency fund. For self-employed mom and pop businesses, here is a big issue. When you look at your tax returns, you are probably a Schedule C filer. Many of the expenses that you have, you are listing on your Schedule C to reduce your taxable income. When you reduce your taxable income, if that's your only source of income, when you go to borrow money, that is what is used to determine how much money you're going to get. So be aware that most of the time, small businesses will have to save a whole lot more in order to borrow money because their borrowing capacity is reduced because their income on paper is reduced. My favorite slide, don't buy that $300 bag to have nothing in it. Buy the $10 bag and have $290 in it. Don't go broke trying to look rich. Pay yourself first. People ask how much? 10%. And then recently I was doing this presentation and Clinton Times said, how much? Until it hurts. Pay yourself until it hurts. It's crucial that you have a huge saving cushion. Pandemic is not really behind us. We've already seen the impact of the pandemic on us. Those who had a huge savings cushion did really well. Those who didn't have impacted their credit score, their roof over their heads, so much has been at risk, all because of not saving enough. So I can't stress the importance of saving. Save until it hurts. If you have no savings, you might have the fanciest car, no gas money, you're stuck going nowhere. Tide. If you are a tither, you already know the concept of 10%. Extend that to 10% to yourself. If you cannot afford, then explore everything else. It's time, talent, and treasures. Time, talent, and treasures. Saving. Look to see if this is who you are. Are you one of those people who spends money you haven't yet earned to buy things you don't really want to impress people you don't really like? If that's you, then, you know, put away that two-year-old for a while. Start small. 50 cents a day is $180 a year. You might say $180 a year, what can you do with it? Probably nothing. But if you get in the habit of saving 50 cents every single day, you will 
get in the habit of saving every day. Habits take a long time. Good habits take very long. Bad habits take like that. But habits can be addicting too. This, the longer you keep saving every day, the more you will want to save. And that is a good thing because who are you saving for? Yourself and your children and your grandchildren. You're saving to build a legacy. That's what thriving is. Surviving is paying your bills, keeping the roof over your head, food in your belly, clothes on your back. That is survival. Thriving is planning for when you, this thriving is when your plan says, hmm, I can quit today and not have to worry about a thing in my life. So your exit plan. And then there's the final exit plan when the Lord calls you. At that time, you want to leave a wealth behind, not dead, and have a wealth. If you don't, give us a call or go to dcrack.org, dcrac.org. Feed the piggy. This is the most important thing. Anytime you find savings, make sure you actually turn it into cash and put it somewhere until it is time for you to go to the bank. If my budget for, say, gas and electric was $180, but this month it cost me only $178. Guess what goes, what happens to the $2? Goes into that piggy bank. End of the month, all of that money gets transferred to the bank account. Now, I may not actually write, uh, take that $2 in there, but I'll definitely have a little note so I can, at the end of the month, uh, reconcile, if you will, how much have I saved and put that money in my savings account. Because when we save and not put it away somewhere with a naming it, money is fickle, it'll find a way out of your pocket. Find savings for food, coupons, cook at home, pack lunch, uh, look at places where you can get free food and there are places you can get free food. Transportation, if you're driving a Land Rover, are you a landowner? Where are your priorities? Can you sell your car right now and maybe Uber for a while? Banking, look at all your banking statements to see if there are fees. If there are, move your account to where you won't be charged a fee. Each time you pay yourself, your future self will thank you. Sweat the small stuff. Pick any item. Can you buy it cheaper? Can you make it laster, last longer? And how can you use less of it? Let's talk about cars. I drive the cheapest car I can possibly find on a dealer's lot. It's got to be brand new and it should have less than 50 miles on it. So I still have that, you know, motorized roll down my window, motorized unlock. I don't kind of have to manually unlock, manually roll down my windows. It's a pain sometimes, but I got my car cheap. Uh, paper towels at BJ's. I buy that other, those uh, blue with little dots, uh, cloth uh, wipes. And I use those most of the time. They dry quickly and they are really, really useful. So I want to see how I can make that uh, paper towels last longer. How, I, how can I use less of it? Pack lunch, avoid paying fees. It's so important for you to figure every way that you can save. 
and all of that saving is going towards you. Pay yourself first. Goals without a date and a dollar, it's just a dream. Smart. Make specific, make your goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timed. Very important. List everything, prioritize, and then get your own buy-in. So list all your goals. You might want a hundred different things. You know you won't get all those hundred different things at the same time. So prioritize which is the most important to you. Once you've prioritized that, you have to negotiate with yourself. What are you going to give up in order to get that, which is your number one priority? Why do you want it? That answer is going to determine everything. What you'll give up, how you will manage your life so that you can get that which is on your goal. When do you want it? That's the time. What are you willing to sacrifice? And most importantly, you ought to know what will it cost? Setting goals. Start with at least one goal. Make a plan. The goal could simply be, I will increase my credit score by 50 points. When will you reach your goal? In 12 months. So March 30th, 2023. How much will it cost you? I know that the Credit Builder Program, I could borrow $300 and pay, pay back $313 over 12 months. So it's really going to cost me $13. I can afford that. But break it down further, monthly cost. Can I save it? $25 a month. Even if I have to live on peanut butter and jelly, love and air, yep, I can save. So now I know I am able to do this. I need to improve my credit score. It is doable. And at the end, I'll also have something that I can be proud of and pat myself on my back. My goal is fill in the blanks. It will cost fill in the blanks. I have X number of months to save for it. Fill in the blanks. I will save this much each month. So if my goal is going to cost me $1,200, I have 12 months. That means I have to save $120 every month by making sacrifices. List that sacrifice. And you're listing that sacrifice to yourself so you know I'm going to give this up. But at the end of the day, I will get this. So I'm giving it up for this to reach my target date. List that date. Sacrifice to reach most goals. You, not me, you will have to make a sacrifice. What are some things that you are willing to give up to reach your goal? List them. If you can't think of anything, look at your goal carefully. Do you really want it? Because if you wanted it, I'm sure you could figure out many things you could give up. Trust me on that. Smart goal. Here's an example. I will be a millionaire on my 60th birthday was a goal that I set out many, many years ago, decades ago, actually, because when I taught these classes, there were times when people would just not listen. So initially, I only started out as a lie. I would lie saying on my 60th birthday, guys, I'll be a millionaire. Do you want to hear how I will get to be one? You say a lie enough number of times, you believe it. So probably after a year or two of lying, I said, you know what? Of course I can become a millionaire on my 60th birthday. And I worked on it. I'm 62 now. I became a millionaire on my 59th birthday. I will save $1,378 
by December 31st, now 2023, by starting the 52 week savings challenge. What's that, you ask? Week one, a dollar. Week two, two dollars. Week 30, 30 dollars. Week 40, save 40 dollars. Week 52, save 52 dollars. Now, if you get stuck and you can't save more than 20 dollars a week, don't give up. Continue saving 20 dollars every week. Every week after that, at the end of 52 weeks or one year, you will be way ahead than you are right now. Or I will increase my credit score by 50 points. I already talked about that. Stick to it. Create a simple contract with yourself. Sign it, date it, keep it front and center. If you are not a paper pencil guy, then stick.com. S-T-I-C-K-K.com. Set your goals, set the stakes, get a referee, add friends for support. It's a free thing. If ever you waver from your goal, your community is going to keep you on track. And set the stakes. If I don't miss my, if I miss my goal, I will pay myself a oh, this would be a fine. I will take my community out to, I don't know, but set the stakes. You can create a text reminder to yourself at ohdon'tforget.com. So, you know, if you want to get out of that coffee stops in the morning, you could text, set a text reminder that say you leave home at 7.30 every morning, 7.25, you'll get the text reminder expenses. So if income is fine, it's just expenses, what do you do about that? When income is not enough, it's easier to cut back than get another job. Why? Remember, getting a second job will be time, taxes, there might be commute, childcare, etc., etc. He who buys what he does not need steals from himself. Beautiful quote. Know where your money is going. Are you happy with where it is going? If you eat out four times a day, a month, not a day, say $80 each month is $960 a year. If you're happy, great. If not, and that $960 a year could prevent an eviction, then you have to rethink about eating out, right? Coffee, $365 a year. Could, you, could there be a better use for it? Identify your spending needs. Think about taking the 52-week savings challenge. Ideas for cutting costs, make a list. Never shop on an impulse, ever. To this day, I go with my list. Clip coupons, and sometimes they might be on your cell phone. Mail-in rebates. I used to sit down and do those, but now everything is online. Stock up and buy bulk. Use debit card or cash instead of credit. Some places, they say it. If you pay cash, it's cheaper. We go to restaurants, we pay cash because the 10% markup for using credit is uh, added to the tip. So uh, the weight team gets 30% instead of 20%. Shop around for prices. Change your thermostat at night and when not at home. Look, I'm wearing a coat today. <clears throat> And it's March 30th, 2022. Excesses. Poor buying habits. Look to see if you end up every week opening the refrigerator and putting stuff from the fridge right into the trash can. If so, look to see what is it. I, I know sometimes my avocados go bad. Sometimes my lettuce goes bad. So I have to make sure when I buy those things, they aren't in the back of my fridge, but they are closer to the front. Poor planning, willingness to pay for conveniences. ATMs are an example. If the ATM is going to charge me money, I will not withdraw. Instant gratification, rent to own, 
is expensive. Entertainment, maybe there can be a month of austerity. Personal, cigarettes, alcohol, salon care. Again, if there, these are excesses, can they be done in moderation? Balance your checkbook. It's always a good idea to look to see where your money is going. And because you get your statements, you need to know if there is any fraud, you're the first one that's going to be able to find it. So they get in the habit of opening all mail. If it is junk, shred it. Otherwise, read it and review it, period, and file it away. If you uh, balance your checkbook, you're going to make sure that you don't end up paying NSF fees, bounce checks, your credit will be good. There won't be any unauthorized withdrawals, charges. If you're looking at your statements every month, you are controlling that two-year-old. Delayed gratification. Some of you have heard my big screen TV story. Husband wanted a Super Bowl party. The year was 2000. The big screen TV was about $3,000. Our savings were zero, zilch, nada. We said we are going to save $200 a month for the next 12 months. ING had just begun its operations in Delaware. They were offering $25 to open an account. We opened three, me, my husband, and our daughter. It wasn't readily accessible for withdrawals. We made it made savings and keeping that money easy for us. So every payday, we'd send $100 every payday into that account. We changed our habits. So we didn't go uh, running to the grocery store because we ran out of bread, milk, eggs. Grocery days to this day are Friday, unless like this week, it'll be today because we are having a lot of family over. Back lunch. These two were the things that helped us save $200 a month. We also recommend automation, refunds, CDs. We did the automation, right? So set up re regular transfers. My tax return of $400 that year went into the ING account. Certificate of deposits, rates were 7%. Every three months, I would put $600 in a CD. So the first CD was nine months, next one was six months, the third one was three months. That's called laddering because all of my CDs I needed to mature at the same time. ING is now Capital One. These accounts are still available. Capital One also has credit wise a very good program. You don't have to be a Capital One customer to take advantage of that. So 12 months later, what happened? The, I opened ING account, $75. My savings were $2,400. Tax refund, $400. Interest income, $125. So I have $3,000. The big screen TV now is $2,000. Deferred gratification. I do the I buy now and pay later deal. All that $3,000 goes into a 12-month CD earning me $210. So I did get what I wanted, the big screen TV. I did have a Super Bowl party, but I didn't get it when I wanted, that's all. Needs and wants, distinguish your needs and wants. Need is a necessity. Utilities are necessities. What can you do to reduce the cost of utilities? Food and cooking. Food is a necessity. How can you reduce the cost of it? Entertainment is a necessity. How do you reduce the cost of that? Insurance is a necessity. What can you do to reduce the cost? Seek other help. There is help. People without a budget are less likely to meet their financial goals have no plan, come up short before the next check and have no plan to save. And I know you are not one of the people. If you don't have a budget, 
you are going to create one before today is over. Answer this honestly to yourself. Are you a good consumer? Do you think before you buy? I walk into a store and I say, this is the maximum I will pay for this dress. If the tag is higher, then I don't even try it on. Compare prices, deal with reputable merchants, evaluate warranties, know your rights. Turn that saving into savings. Money is fickle. It finds a way out of our pockets. Buy a piggy bank or use the shoebox. Set up a bank account that you cannot touch. Name this account, example, saving for my home. Each month, move your savings into this account. Don't buy the $300 bag to have nothing in it. Buy the $10 bag and have 290 in it. Don't go broke trying to look rich. Thank you. See you next Wednesday.